45 and 46. I want to treat this page as, yes, you probably did a lot of it, but I also want to kind of treat it as notes. Is that okay? Okay, so could we take a look at numbers uh, 1 through 12 on page 45? Page 45. I Because I'm treating these as notes. I'll put them in the grade book. You put a mark on it. Here, we'll do that. So page 45, 46. And I'm just like going to look just right now at problems 1 through 12. So take an honest look at problems 1 through 12. Whether you did them or not, take an honest look at problems 1 through 12 on page 45, 46. Let me know if there's something that I can clarify on any of those. Go ahead. Number 11. You got it. Okay. So problem number 11 is... Uh, I have x plus 3, and I have 2x minus 1, and then I have plus 2x and x minus 1. So this is a, uh, a double distribution problem. So here, I, I'm going to have to do the math here, so double distribute, and then single to distribute on here. Is that okay if I say that? Okay, so I'm going to try... I don't know if I can use too many other colors and you guys, I, that bulb's getting bad. All right, so I'm going to distribute here. So that's going to give me 2x squared. I'm going to distribute here. That gives me minus 2x. I'm going to distribute here. That gives me plus 6x. I'm going to distribute here. That gives me minus 3. And then I'm going to distribute here to give me 2x squared. And distribute here to give me minus 2x. Let me just pause there. The problem's not done, but do you feel comfortable with the math that I did? And I think that's a tougher problem. So is there anything about how I put together those problems that is different? Or that you need extra guidance on? Okay? All right. Now, we need to look for like terms. And we said like terms have the same letter. And that same letter has the same what? Uh, exponent, right? So this and this, those are like terms. So if I count them up, how many x squareds would I have then? 4x squared, right. And then I have those right there. So I have negative 2x, positive 6x, negative 2x. So if I go negative 2, add to 6, I get 4, right? And then, good, now let's practice another two ways, so I get two. And then, looks like a minus three. Yeah, definitely, you got it. Does everyone look good on 11? You feel comfortable? A couple of you are talking while I go through it, so I apologize that your master's at it. But number one, you said B? All right, number one, a negative 12x to the fifth times negative 2x to the fifth. All right, first thing we're just going to kind of look at is I have a negative times a negative, and a negative times a negative is a positive. positive. And then a 12 times a 2 is a what? 24. And then x to the fifth times x to the fifth, like bases when I'm multiplying, I add the exponents, right? So x to the fifth. Done. That's it. Yeah. Is that okay, B? Yes. Number 10. So I get 2x. I get 3x. And now you get x plus 2. Okay. I think I might look at this problem where I think I'll put together just the 2x and the 3x right away. So 2x times 3x, 2 times 3 is 6. x times x is x squared. And then I'm going to multiply it with this. Is that all right so far? That's the very first step. All right? Um... If I distribute here, I distribute here, I'm going to wind up with 6x to the third. 
and then 6 times the 2 is going to be 12x squared. And that's the answer to that problem. Good. Yeah. 7, you got it. Oh, so you're thinking like the next question, how you got to have the x plus 2, you just keep it to one thing, like the one after one? Like that, yeah. So you have one there and a one there. Yeah, does that make sense? The one there. That's, and if you ever want it on a test, just go through and put a ones there. Go for it. You're, you're not doing it incorrect. Seven. All right, number seven. I have five x squared plus two. Thank you. Two x minus three. No, my eyes wander off my paper. I can never find where that problem went. I don't know. Like, where would it go? Ants marching, I guess it is. All right. This is a double distribution. Okay, so Brandon, there's my one. Is that all right? Ready? Multiply there, there. So that's going to give me 10x to the third. Multiply here to here. That gives me negative 15x squared. Okay, we're not quite done yet because we still have to distribute what? The two. The two. Okay, so I'm going to go here to here. So that gives me plus 4x. And then here to here gives me minus 6. Take a look. Do we have any like terms? I have x to the third, x to the second, x and not an x. So that's my entire answer with no like terms to combine together. Okay. Anything else? Nine. Oh, that's a good one. Number nine. And twelve. And twelve. You got it. Oh, twelve would be a good one. So number nine. X squared plus one. And two x squared minus three x plus six. Okay. Still with me? This is a double distribute, where I have the double distribute over a trinomial. So I'm going to go x squared, x squared. So that's going to give me 2x to the fourth. And then here, that's going to give me minus 3x to the third. And then I'm going to go here. That's going to give me plus 6x squared. Not quite done, because I still have to do the same thing with the 1. So I look to see if we have any like terms. It looks like I have x squared, right? That's the only, that's the only thing that's going to combine together. So I get 2x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 8x squared minus 3x plus 6. And then you said one other one. I forgot what one. 12? Okay. Can I scrape that one? Move on? Yeah. Oh, 12 is a great one because it kind of starts showing where you have your understanding of, of exponents. Okay? So, quick, simple question without doing much of this problem. How many x minus 3s will I be multiplying together? Two. Two. Why is that? Yeah, the entire quantity, the entire thing in, in parentheses is raised to the second power. So that means that I need to rewrite this as x minus 3 times x minus 3, and then the minus 8 comes along for the right. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. So it looks like that now. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. So let's take care of the double distribution, and then we have the minus 8 that we'll take care of at the end. So I have x squared. Minus 3x, minus 3x, plus 9, and then we have to remember this minus 8. Is that okay? So I have like terms. I have the negative 3x and the negative 3x. I also have the 9 and the negative 8. That's a plus sign. 
Doing okay? So you go. Let, let's do it. Hang on, let me let's just let's calculate a warm up. Number six, you said, right? Yeah. All right. So number six, do you see that number six, you have x and y. And you have one sign being minus, one sign being positive, right? Yeah. This is actually a special property, which we're going to start we'll focusing on a little bit more. So if I go x times x, I get x squared. x times y is xy. Negative y times x is negative xy if I go alphabetical order. And then negative y squared. What do you notice about these two? Cancel out. So I get x squared minus y squared. And this is a perfect thing to lead me into a name. This, this answer right here is called the difference of two squares. Well, I'm just, because you'll start seeing that called that way, okay? Now, so difference, the word difference in math means subtraction. Agree? Right? Is x squared a perfect square? Meaning, can I take something times the exact same thing to get x squared? I can go x times x to get x squared, right? What about y squared? Can I take something, the exact same thing, multiply times itself to get y squared? Yeah, I can take y times y to get y squared, right? So this, the word, the term difference of two squares means you have a subtraction sign between two perfect squares. Those two perfect squares can be letters. So when you look, and if you know perfect squares, x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, x to the even is a perfect square. Y to the second, Y to the fourth, Y to the sixth, Y to an even exponent is a perfect square. And then we also know perfect squares like one's a perfect square, four is a perfect square, nine's a perfect square, 16, etc. right? Because those all have the exact same number that you could multiply times itself to get there. Okay? Are we all right with all of this so far? Okay. Now, yeah. 12. Okay, so now, I wanted to kind of take a, a side commercial break. You don't need to know what I'm going to tell you right now, but it, this applies to what this stuff is. Okay, so remember I said no matter what exponent you raise something to, the higher exponent you go, the different dimension it changes to. Is that okay? Remember when I said that? Yeah. Okay, so if you had something that has just x, that's just a line. That's the first dimension. Linear. Good. And then if I had x squared, it's called quadratic, which a quadratic is like a square or a rectangle or a circle. Okay? The, like, that's the second dimension. You have length and width to it. Okay? Third dimension is cubic. So that'd be like length, width, and height. So like a shoebox. Okay? So this part, this part of this, you don't need to write anything down. I just want you to visualize what this is doing. Okay, so let's say you work for a cardboard company. Still with me? It's not, not a real hard thing. It's not like, dude, that sounds like the best job ever. It might be, I don't know. But let's say your boss came to you and said to you, okay, we have this square flat piece of cardboard. This square piece of cardboard has dimensions of 36 inches by 36 inches. Are you still with me in this little adventure? 
Anything about what I've just said, that makes no sense. So you work for a cardboard company. Your boss came to you and said, we got all these square pieces of cardboard, which are 36 by 36 inches, which is three feet by three feet, if you wanted to, to think about that. OK? There's nothing real tough about this, right? OK, now, your boss is going to task you with making a box. But we're going to make a box that won't have a lid on top of it. Make sense? So it's like your shoe box that doesn't have the lid on it. You can see right into it. Still with me? So what we want, what we're being tasked to do is to make ourselves a box or a cube that you don't have a lid on. Okay? So things that your boss will tell you. Yes, you can you can cut this. You can bend it, you can fold it, and then you can put tape around the edges. Still with me? Yeah. Nothing, nothing seems too impossible, right? So, the only thing your boss wants you really to do is to do this. They want the maximum amount of volume that box will have. Okay? They want to have it the largest volume that you can have. Okay, volume meaning, you know, you're going to fill this up with something for the volume. Length with height. It's in cubic. In this case, it'll be in cubic inches. Does this make sense? So, you go and you start figuring out a few things. You're like, you know what? If I cut out of each corner a square, and that square I cut out of each corner is the exact same size Exact same, same size square, even though I can't draw it that way. So you're going to take a pair of scissors. You're going to cut along the dotted lines. Okay? And these four pieces here go to the recycle bin. They're trash. Okay? So what's going to happen now is once you cut those pieces out, you're going to get a shape. And I'm just trying to show you what the shape would be. Of course, we're not exact. So if I cut the four corners off of that, do you agree that it looks like that big plus sign? Does that make sense? And so what I can do with this big plus sign is I can fold up each of these edges. So I can fold this edge up, this edge up, this edge up, and this edge up. And I can use tape. And so then I'm going to create myself some sort of cube. OK? Make sense? OK, so. What your boss says, I want the maximum volume of that cube. Okay? So we have this 36 by 36 piece of cardboard. We can cut out any size square from each corner, fold up those sides now, tape the sides together, and create some sort of box that doesn't have a lid. Okay? But your boss says, hey, I want you to make this the biggest volume possible. So you could technically go in and say, all right, I know I'm probably going to make something about an inch. So I could cut out a one inch corner from each and fold it up. And that means my box is only one inch tall, right? Or I could cut out a two inch square, which fold up the sides, which means that I have a box that's two inches tall. I can do it as three inches or four inches or what, or even a, a combination. It could, doesn't have to be an exact inch. So I have an unknown cut I'm going to make. And that unknown cut, I'm going to represent calling it X. So what that means is the height of my box is going to be X tall. Still with me? Because I don't know. I know that X can't be bigger than 18, because if it was bigger than 18, that would be halfway in the middle, and I, it would happen. So it's got to be probably less than an 18-inch cut to give me this box. So I want you to think about this. This distance from here to here was how far originally? 36. 
So how far is this distance from here and here going to be with relationship to x? Not 18. It's 36 minus how many x's? Two. So this distance right here, this distance right here, right across, is going to be the distance of 36 minus 2x. And being as a square, that means that this distance here is also going to be 36 minus 2x. So my box is going to be 36 minus 2x. This part right here is going to be 36 minus 2x. And then the height is going to be a height of x. So in order to find the volume of an object, you go side times side times side. Length times width times height. Yes? So I have a length of 36 minus 2x. I have a width of 36 minus 2x. And I have a height of x. So as you said, if it's length times width times height, that means if I take 36 minus 2x times 36 minus 2x times x, that is going to be my volume equation. Okay, so my volume equation, and I'm not, I'm not going to do the math on this because... That is my volume equation to our box. Still with me? You ready for coolness? You ready for to geek it up a little bit in math? All right, here we go. I'm going to bring up the graphing calculator. Okay? I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to clear out anything I have. So, but I know my box is 36 minus 2x by 36 minus 2x. I have two parentheses in there for some reason. I need to go back there and make that more. There we go. And then what's my last dimension? 36 by 2x, 36 by 2x, and x. OK. So if I multiply this all together, or if I just leave it as is, my graph is going to do this. So. Let's, let's do a couple things. So I'm going to adjust the window on my calculator. Am I going to have a negative cut? That doesn't make sense. So my x minimum is going to be 0. My maximum in the x direction, I'm going to go all the way out to 36. My, do you think I'm going to have, ever have, no, I can't have a negative in a volume sense. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna keep that as like negative 20. And then I'm gonna take that to like 100. So what I'm doing is I created my window to to replicate what I think would look best. So if I graph this, if I graph this shape, oh, it looks like that. I'm not quite big enough. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my window a smidge. I'm gonna take this out to say negative 10 in the x. I'm going to go up to 500 in the y direction. So let's graph this down. Ooh, I didn't go big enough. I got to go bigger. Window. I'm going to change my y maximum to 1,000. <coughs> graph. Holy cow. Got to go bigger. Change my window in the y direction. I'm going to take that out to 2,000. Still not big enough. I'm going to take that out to 3,000. Hopefully. Holy cow, still not big enough. I want to get one more in there. Window. I'm going to take it out to 4,000. I think that's about as much as I'm going to go. I should have the answer. There we go. Okay, so what you're looking at up there is something called a third degree polynomial. Meaning if I multiply x times x times x, I get x to the third power. x to the third power means your graph will have two directional changes. It'll go from going up to going down. It'll go from going down to going up. So it goes from up to going down. It goes from down to going up. So we have two direction changes.
because it's raised to the third power. Okay? So remember our original task. We had this box, that, this piece of cardboard that was 36 inches by 36 inches. We have this box that was 36 by 36. We cut a square out of each side of x dimension. We fold the sides up to find the volume. The volume is length times width times height. I found the length to be 36 minus 2x. I found the width to be 36 minus 2x. I found the height to be x. So I'm going to look for what this point is right here. This point. This is called a local maximum. So I'm throwing a little pre-calc and calc terms at you. But watch how cool this calculator is. If I go to second calculate and I want to calculate a maximum value, I'm going to take my cursor and I need to go to the left side of where the highest part is. Okay, I'm definitely on the left side of the highest part. And I'm going to go to the right side where the highest part was. So I'm definitely to the left or to the right. Okay, so somewhere in between these, I'm going to find the highest maximum. Do I want to guess? No, I want, I want an answer. Okay. If I make a 6-inch cut, well, it's 5.999985, so we'll round to 6 inches. If I make a 6-inch cut, a 6 by 6 square cut out of each of my things, the maximum volume I will get is 3,456 cubic inches. What did I just show you? I showed you how a third-degree polynomial can indeed apply to something that you would know about. You've all dealt with cardboard before. I'm not asking you to fold up cardboard sides and all that kind of stuff. I'm saying a piece of cardboard, if you wanted to figure out how to make the maximum volume, it's a third, third degree polynomial. And when you find the local maximum, it'll tell you how big your cut has to be in the corners. And it'll tell you what your maximum volume will be. Okay, So that's your math geek for the day. Back to our regular math. No, not at all. I just wanted to show you, I think everyone can envision a piece of cardboard and doing that simple task, right? So, and just by using this equation, which could we multiply this out? Could I go 36 times 36? Yeah. Can I go 36 times negative 2x? Yeah. Can I go negative 2x times 36? Yeah. Can I go negative 2x? Times negative two x, yeah. You, may, you might need a calculator for some of it, but that's okay. And then once I had my answer, could I multiply everything over by the x? Yeah. And then you're looking at this thing that's to the third power, which would have a local maximum and a local minimum. All right, let's go back to our page 45. Okay, let's take a look down at 13 through 18. Oh shoot, I. Knocked out a couple people. I got, I got three people napping. I got B and T and I all napping. change that clock to like 3.51 and we all went outside and did <laughs> and then, <laughs> then ring the bell and we're like, oh, wait, wait. <laughs> the commercial's over. Yay, you woke up. Anyone else fall back to sleep? You what? No, um, remember I said the question about the one that was on the same page in class, and they wrote on the board, the world is ending, we all went, we all left with the evacuation floor, and then everyone walked out of class, and they broke up. All right. Let's take a look at 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, and let me walk through each of those. Okay? And I think they're all ones that we would know how to do. So number 13. Number 13, we have x minus 7 and x plus 7. So let's do our math. Okay. 
What cancels? Seven. Seven, so I get x squared minus 49. Okay, is x squared a perfect square? Yes, because x times x is x squared. x to an even exponent is always a perfect square. Is 49 a perfect square? Wow. Yeah, because 7 times 7 is 49. So that is known as the difference of two squares. Difference meaning subtraction, right? Okay, can I go to number 14? Number 14. I get x minus 7 quantity squared. How many x minus 7s am I multiplying together? Two. Two. So I have x minus 7 and x minus 7. And if I do the math, I get x times x is x squared, and x times negative 7 is negative 7x, and negative 7 times x is negative 7x, and negative 7 times negative 7 is positive 49. And if I combine, oh, I have like terms here, right? So I have x squared minus 14x plus 49. Did I multiply the exact same binomial together to get that answer? Yeah, so that's called a perfect square trinomial. Okay, let me say that one more time. Did we multiply two of the exact same binomial together to get that answer? Yes? So if I multiply the exact same binomial, x minus 7 and x minus 7 together, x minus 7 times x minus 7 would have to yield us a perfect square trinomial. Let's look at number 15. The only difference on number 15 is it's x plus 7. Okay. So how many x plus 7s am I multiplying together on this one? Two. Two. Okay, so if I do my math, I get x squared plus 7x plus 7x plus 49. I'm going to combine my like terms, 7x and 7x. So x squared plus 14x plus 49 is a perfect square trinomial as well. Okay? Because I took the exact same binomial and multiplied it together. Number 16. 2x plus 3 and 2x minus 3. The exact same two binomials, but they're separated by one sign different. So I multiply this together, I'm going to get 4x squared minus 6x plus 6x minus 9. Do we combine 6x and negative 6x to get 12x, or do we get 0? Zero? 0. So now I get 4x squared. Minus 9. Is 4 a perfect square? Yes. Is x squared a perfect square? Yes. Is 4x squared a perfect square? Yes, because 2x times 2x. Is 9 a perfect square? Is there a subtraction sign? What's this called? The difference of 2? Okay. Number 17, x plus 2, x minus 2. If I multiply this together, I'm going to get x squared minus 2x plus 2x minus 4. Middle terms go bye-bye because they're opposite, so I get x squared minus 4. Is x squared a perfect square? Yes, it is 4 a perfect square. Is there a subtraction sign in between these? Yes. This is the what called what? The difference of two squares. Difference of two squares. Good. All right. Number 18. I get 2x minus 5. Quantity squared. How many 2x minus 5s am I multiplying together? Two. two. Okay, when I multiply this together, I'm going to get 4x squared minus 10x minus 10x plus 25. Do the 10x's cancel? No. They add together, they combine together, so I get 4x squared minus 20x plus 25. 
This answer is a perfect square trinomial. The reason it's a perfect square trinomial is I took the two of the exact same binomials and multiplied them together to get to the answer. Okay? So, if this worksheet was done, page 45 and 46 was done, if it is done, you do not have an assignment for the weekend. If you need to finish it because you didn't get quite to 46, right? Because I didn't go to the back side and copy it all down. You need to finish it over the weekend. So you don't have homework unless you didn't get the homework done from last night. Hang on till to Monday, would you please? Or no, to Wednesday. To Wednesday. 